Good evening, everyone. Welcome to FPRL Fair Play Racing League. Tonight we see Tier 2 take on the Three Mile Circuit in Imola. Surely going to be a good race around a good classic track that everyone loves and enjoys. Uh, we'll see if these drivers are going to love and enjoy it, though, in quality, because as we can see, it's absolutely pouring it with rain. And once again tonight, uh, as we've just got the 15 drivers, it's another short quality, which does mean that there's only going to be one session for these guys to put in their best lap. 17 minutes of quality coming up for you. And like I said, only one chance for these guys to put in their best laps and get themselves as far up that grid as possible for the race, which will be starting in around 20 minutes time. Uh, I'm co comms tonight for you, Monkey Boy Kurt, and on the stream tonight, and on your main comms once again, for two weeks in a row, it's FPRL Locker. Hello. Thank you for doing that, my friend. How are we this evening? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Um, I'm once again looking forward uh, to the quality now. It's been two weeks in a row, isn't it? We've had wet quality, I think, in here too. Um, yeah, it was intermediate. It was only intermediate, so last week. So this is full wet. So it'll be interesting to see what the uh, drivers can do. And again, I think it's the first—is it the first wet race we've had this week for all three tiers? Uh, it will. We had a bit of wet quality, I believe, um, in tier three, but the race I think was dry, if I'm not mistaken. So oh, yes, we did. Uh, I think it was Q1. I think in Q tier three it was wet, but not as wet as full wet. So. Um, I'm pretty sure, like I always say, no one really practices in the wet conditions. <laughs> so we're most likely no. going to see some uh, slower lap times first. And if you get towards the last sort of two or three minutes of the session, you still start to see times coming down and people getting faster once they've been used to the track. Yeah, I think 100% for me, and I should remember that it was the wet if you want on one, so two or three. No, I don't know that, but hey ho, here we go. Uh, the first car that looks like it's going to take us on the left is these guys. I guess I'm saying guys. I don't know how you can't see the guys <laughs> in the horse is going to be the first one to take us on our left. I don't know if you want to um, take us on the first line last session, my friend. Yeah, no worries, Rocker. He gets very good and he's going to back in as he comes out of the final corner of the drive and starts to pop the speed speed is wet, falling down and running straight. Coming up to turn one now, breaking around the 100 metre board with his wet conditions. And it's already gone wide. And I'm not sure if he's going to back out. And we can already see how difficult these conditions are. Will he carry on? It looks like he's going to. But he has got multiple cars behind him who are also on hot laps. Comes to the end of sector one. And it is a slow 29 6 through the first sector. I believe we've also got. A car, I think it's Pines that has spun off behind as well. Um, as we come now through the start of sector two up the hill towards this fast left hander, and yeah, he's they are really struggling out here. They're gonna definitely have to start getting used to the conditions. They've only got about 12 or 13 minutes now to do so. Um, as we come now to the end of sector two, and Rise is just losing the back end at all, all the time so. Mm. Really got to get used to those revs. It's a 101 through sector two. And now, down towards the end part of a lap. Now we come down the hill towards the last three turns on the track. And now we've got this double left hander uh, coming up wide again. And you can certainly go faster than what he's put in this lap. He comes across the line, and it is. It's going to be a 130, I think, 130.7. It's surely going to be beaten there by people behind him. Yet, Cross Kerry goes with a 28.9 and Yorkie with a 30.2. Yeah, like you say, going through that lap, Lanny, he was a bit off it. I know he, he's is more capable than that. And Zilla comes across the line now with a 29.2 to put himself provisionally P2. Um... Obviously, we've got to go and have laps flying in all sorts. Who's the next person on the lap? Uh, Tiddlewink. Those jumps just in front of his teammate with a... Well, I say just in front of his teammate. Nearly second quick and his teammate goes third with a 29-2. 
Yeah, not too bad lap from him. Also, TJ comes through with a 29.7. Um, Chris Kerry then in the early stages, setting the fastest time into the 28. I would expect to see a lot more people though start to get around that, or even beat that. Jimmy Vane also comes across the line with a 29.8. And I think now we've got a uh, silver side boy coming towards the line. Let's see what he can produce. Oh, he produces fastest. the fastest time of the session so far, the 28.7. So good luck there from Silver Side Boy. Yeah, um, if you just give me two seconds, I've just got to sort my uh, game sounds out and whatnot. So okay. I do apologise, folks. You'll see all the menus and then shouldn't be too long, though. All right, so a few more drivers coming across the line now. I think we've got, is it uh, Zilla coming around the final corner? Is he going to go out for another lap? I believe he is, and he's up on this lap. This could take the uh, first place off to the side boy for now. And, and he does. does. 28.4, so already now, yeah, you can definitely see that some of these drivers are starting now to get used to the conditions. Absolutely. As we got, and then Tiddle, I comes across the line again, 28.4, but slightly faster than Zilla by around about, I'd say about half a tenth, give or take. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the best. <laughs> uh, sergeants in the chat saying I might just not qualify. I think that's a little bit being a bit oh. weak to be honest. Just get out there and give it your best shot. Like what? Well, yeah, know, you could you could put in a flying lap and go P1. Could or he could have like I'm not saying it's going to happen, but he could have 14 people in front of him all crash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> You'd never know. <laughs> Anything yeah. can happen, my friends. So get yourself out there and get us a lap on the board. Please. Here comes a driver that hasn't uh, raced at all this season. It's TPA Groot. Let's see what he can do. He goes P7 for now, a 29.5. That's not too bad from him. He should hopefully that, will yeah. be looking to improve on that once he gets a bit of uh, feeling for the track. But yeah, good first time from him. Yeah, good little sighter for him. Just over a second off. No, but like you said, People will still be getting used to these wet conditions, full wet as well, not just intermediates. But Zello coming across the line, he looks like he's on a cool down there. Stiff Master just does improve his time slightly, but just jumps up to the P10 with a 129.9. Yeah, now, I mean, looking at, like, you know, the, the normal strategy for obviously um, the wet conditions is to kind of put a bit more fuel in the car and just let leave the car out there for about a good four or five laps and that allows you to get used to the conditions, used to the track. It does mean also you're not putting, putting the accelerator down as much as you would normally on a, on a dry lap so you don't normally tend to drain your ERS as much as well. No, that is, that is, that is facts, yeah. Obviously, people will still be wary if we got anybody on the lap. I think yeah, Pines is coming round. Pines, here he is, my friend. Going through the final sector now. But yeah, like like you were saying, with these wet conditions, obviously people will want not to put the throttle down as e as fast as they maybe normally would in the dry conditions. So you won't get a feel for the track. Um, save up a bit more of your essence. Pines could <laughs> push come across the line. <laughs> it is the first driver within the 127s with the 127.8. And I think Zill just come across the line as well. Does improve to a 28.1. Yeah, Pines, what a lap that is for him. And I have to say that I have Ooh. seen um, on the time trial leaderboards that he is the quickest tier 2 on the list. So it looks like he definitely loves this track both in the wet and the dry but we know what it's been like <laughs> for uh, the race it in the race so we just need to put all that past bad luck behind him and at the moment he's on for pole position yeah it is like I said that was his yeah first flying lap as well 27.8 right put the marker down for everybody to uh, keep up and yeah very, he's a very quick driver, very consistent, consistent or quick, 
to wear them with before, but I don't know. Or, or it might be both. Who knows? <laughs> well, I know for a fact that, yeah, he's definitely got quality pace in him, but um, it's whether or not he can do that in the race. And, you know, he hasn't. He's got the odd winning FPRL before, but he would have liked to have some more. But, um, you know, with times like that, if it's a wet race, he might be um, looking on for that potentially another one today. So we've just then got, and here we go, he goes <laughs> then he goes now. 27.6. Um, so he's just then got the Alpine duo tonight, a little maestro, and filling in four twins tonight is Sergeant Randolph, who is coming around now the final corner. Oh no, sorry, that's the little maestro thing. It's going across now, must have been validated. And Sergeant's. Trip. It does come across the come around the final corner now. Bottle down. Doesn't look like a lap will be challenging up to the top, but he does go P3 with the 28-3. Well, there you, there you go then. He was gonna he was gonna stay in the pits, and uh, but he's glad that he did now because P3 <laughs> at the moment is a lot better than P3. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've got yellows in sector one. Looks like Ball is just getting off the track to uh, let a few people past. Got an Alpha Tauri coming across the line. I think that was LWS Yorkie. Goes P8 with a 28.8. Yeah, now, interesting enough, I might be wrong here. Um, we'll probably find out a bit more in the next uh, three minutes or so. But um, everyone seeming to use the one set of tyres at the moment for their laps and um, you can see Cross Kerry go second on six lap old wets with a 27.8 um, I know we get two sets of wets for the race weekend so this potentially could mean that we're going to possibly have some wet weather in the race but obviously we've still got five yeah. minutes to go we might see people change to a fresh set in the next couple yeah. of minutes or so yeah, I think I think you're spot on there. Obviously, with the two sets of wets that we do get in the race weekend, um, whether people are just trying to drain with that one set of tyres, trying to stay out as much as we possibly can on the same set, and then just do one, one or two flying runs at the end on a fresh set. Who knows? But yeah, could could potentially be a wet start to the race as well. That's maybe why they're doing it. But like I said, who knows? We never know. We'll just get a big surprise when they load into the lobby after quality. Yeah, and it's worth telling the viewers as well that because of the recent uh, issues with the formation lap in this game, that we aren't running a formation lap tonight. So I beg that no one readies up early, because if anyone's not at their controller or wheel, then they're going to be sitting pucks on the grid. Yeah, and they have been reminded, the available had an announcement that there's no formation lap and they've also been reminded as the lobby opened from our lobby host as well so if anybody does then they'll be in trouble yeah. so then sort of almost a bit of a gap from the bottom three it looks like um fries could potentially get it because well tpa group 29.5 uh, three temps off rise and then Stiff Meister and TJ down at the bottom. Now TJ normally, I know on last season's game he loved this track, um, but it might just be the wet conditions that he's not enjoying at the moment, but there is always still time to improve as he now comes on yeah. to his fifth flying lap, I think, on this set of tyres. TJ, I've, I've got no laps on the graphic, so looks oh, like a fresh set of tyres, yeah. Let me change it up. Oh, that's because I was on <laughs> best. <laughs> you were on Zilla. <laughs> oh, no. So the whole time I've been on best and not tire. So ah. ignore what I said two minutes ago about everyone's not on soft tire, uh, fresh tires, because literally the whole field is now on fresh tires. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Ooh. <sighs> Yeah, but like, like you said, just going back to what you just touched on with TJ there, obviously the last season specifically, he did really love this track. It, it must be a uh, good track that he likes, but whether it is a mix of the wet conditions, as obviously me and you know, the other people won't know, he has had a little bit of a break away this this week. 
So it could be just that little bit less practice than he might normally do, potentially. Yeah, we know he's, he's definitely he's definitely capable of not being the uh, last on the grid as he just does go up into P8 with a 28-7. Yeah, 28-7 for TJ. Good lap there from him. He's still got probably enough for uh, I'd say one more lap, maybe a rundown lap, a rundown lap, and then one more flying lap. That's uh, everyone's now at the pits apart from Zilla, who I think is now just crawling out now it's um yeah it's going to be a definitely an exciting end to the session and wonder if anyone can surprise us from really any position really stiff might goes up to 11th improves a little bit not seeming to enjoy the conditions at the moment with stiff i would have expected him to be a bit further up yeah he has got a bit of pace behind him we've got three threes or guys just coming across the line now jumps up just in front of tj Again with the 28-7. We're sort of around that midfield pack between at least Silverside Boy at the minute and down to Baldy. Are pretty close, sort of within the sort of temp of each other or just just above. Yeah, that's it. And TJ coming around again now. He's another two temps up, so uh, we'll see where he puts this. It could potentially put him up into sixth place here if he gets a good run out of the last corner. Uh, as he comes across the line now, uh, it's looking a bit quicker. And it does put him up into P7, so another couple of places oh, gained there from TJ. Yeah. The line, the line, so we've got, we've got a McLaren coming across the line now of Silverside Boy, who... <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's an answer for Pines. That's a great lap from Silverside Boy. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, Silver size boy saying, uh, you know what, Pines, here's what I can do. Go around, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, that, definitely. That's a phenomenal lap from uh, Silver Side Boy. His stiff mice then goes up into ninth. York, I think, had invalidated that he will go around again one more time. Rises now going around the final corner, and he's eight temps up. This could potentially put him up to around fifth position. It's even Ooh. better. He goes second. What a lap that is. That is an impressive one. Fearful uh, final sector as well, but as we both know, we don't know what the game's throwing out there. We just first personal best. There's Tedo Link comes across the line with a 27 2. <laughs> and then Cross Creek goes even faster. Well, this is either a drying track or they're just getting used to the uh, conditions. Pine This is anyone's <laughs> pole position. So it goes up to second with a 27 1. Uh, Phenom, I think. I know it's, uh, yeah, but Aston Martin's TJ, he's four tenths down, unfortunately, oh, so he will not improve. Who's next? Looks like an Alpine, Nimfield He's down. Silverside Boy, is, looks like he's going to be the next one across the line. Oh, he's coming the pits, he's, he's down. Juno Vane. Nine tenths up. Oh! <laughs> tell you what, this is a cracking antiquary. It's oh, P8. Oh, yeah, Aston Martin, that would be Zilla. He invalidated. Unfortunately, Lee went coming across. Oh no, so it's Yorkie coming Yorkie. across the line now. On the P9, Yorkie. And we've got Cross Curry. No, it's not. Where is it? Stiff Mars, who went into the pits. We've got a pass in there. In the pits. McLaren. Yeah, it might be the end of it, I don't know. Cross Kerry is coming across the line, so is Sergeant, so is Pines. I think it's out of these three now. Who's going to take it? Cross Kerry, no, he's down. Pines comes across the line. This looks quick. Oh, what a time. What a time that is. 26 1. Where has that come from? What a time. I'm. Wow. Just wow. But literally, that is. That, oh, let me just get the, the gap up. It's like seven tenths quicker than anyone else. Yeah, it's just come it out wrong. of nowhere. I, I do think the track might have been slightly uh, drying out near the end there because everyone was improving. What, an, Like we said, what an end. 
once again to the quali. Um, but yeah, I have seen Pines. What a little time. And he's just left oh. the session. Brilliant. <laughs> Get him back in quickly, my friend. Well, he needs to come back in. We haven't got a formation lap. Oh, that is true, yeah. As I'll quickly run down the uh, orders we had. So, lap we've just said, Pines on pole with a fantastic lap of a 126.1. Uh, joining him in the 126s, we've got Sergeant Randolph in P2 in his Alpine. Uh, Groskri, P3. Tillowink, P4. Phenom, P5. Gary, P6. Rise, 7. Junior Vane, 8. And then I forgot about the rest. Because it went off. Right, um, well... What a lap that was from Pines. I don't know if he's come back in and I've sent him an invite. But, uh, I just pray that he's seen it. But, um, let's see if we can get him back in. Hopefully he will. He's not back in yet. Which is not good. Pole setter as well. Well, dry race it looks like, Locker. <clears throat> Good stuff. Although the, the clouds do look a bit... Yeah. We have a yeah. look in the chat while we're waiting then. Wink says that the track starts to dry towards the end. Uh, Could have gone out on another run. Uh, tricks and fraud we've got in the chat. Get this man to tier one immediately. <laughs> Sergeant Randolph saying I couldn't do a sub 30 in practice. Well, you must have took the sandbags out then because you were playing a 26 8. Uh, oh, Pines' Xbox turned off. So, hopefully, he gets back in before the start. <laughs> I have sent you two invites, mate. So, please try and get in. No one really up, obviously. Um, oh, Adrian's entered the chat. Uh, nice to see that you're uh, in the chat but not racing. Fraud. Um, Fraud. <laughs> Adrian says to David, I hope your vape runs out of puffs. Well, that's a bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's actually run out of battery, Adrian, not puffs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it's because he's bloody like 16, isn't it? He's on his bloody elf bars, that's why. <laughs> I've just had a look what David's put in the chat back. Adrian, I hope your lungs run out of puffs. That was David's, <laughs> that, not me. A bit harsh from league management, but it's all right. I am. Uh, right. Uh, as we are still waiting to go, uh, if uh, anyone is wanting to know the standings, a uh, certain driver is not here tonight in Mr. Snedden, and he is the championship leader, so he is really sacrificing his lead potentially because Ravenzilla, who only qualified 11th, you know, she's going to be a bit of a bad quali, wouldn't have wanted to be there, would have wanted to be a bit higher. He is two points behind him, so um, he'll be hoping to get up from 11th position on the grid to have a good finish and take the lead of that championship. TJ, 10 points behind them. Uh, behind Zilla, his teammates. So the Aston Martins having a good start to the season, um, as well as uh, another Aston Martin driver on uh, Wednesday night. Um, Jack, jammy, you, uh, you jammy bastard. But uh, we'll Whoa. say no more on that. Right place, right time. I'll keep <laughs> saying it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, midfield maestro was actually the uh, early leader of the championship after two races, but um, didn't have the best one in Australia. I think he's dropped down to about fourth or fifth in the standings. He starts 13th, so he'll also be wanting to have a, a good race from that position to try and get mm. as many points as possible and keep himself in contention at the front of the standings. Uh, interesting. Just... Sorry, look, I go. I was going to say, I just think it's just a case now we're just currently waiting on to see if Pines does manage to get himself back in. Has joined. I've seen him join. It's just a case of him oh. loading in there, I think. Really? Lovely. So, I think that's probably why TJ might be holding off a little bit. 
just so he can get in. I would have thought that he'd be probably in by now. Um, yeah. um, I mean, what I was going to say then is just going back to the way you've just been running down the standings. I've just got him up on my phone as the clock is running down. Uh, potentially, like you say, with Sneddon not racing tonight, is a good potential shot for Revenge Hill to possibly take the championship lead tonight. I think there's only three drivers behind him who are within a race win of Sneddon. Yeah, that's so. it. Well, there is going to be no formation up. We're going to go straight away. So, oh, yes. lights are going to come on now. One, okay. two, three, four, and five. And the lights go, and we're away. And Pines gets a good start. Sergeant does not get a good start, and Cross Terry has already jumped in. Into turn one, Tiddly so also the jumped. Oh, someone's off at the back. Borley is off towards the back. And is there going to be any contact this time around? I think everyone's getting through okay that first corner of the locker. They have, yeah. Whereas they do go as sergeants right on the back of Tiddlewink still, just in between the both of the Alpha Tauris. And, uh, yeah, Pines looks all, all ready. Looks like he's going. He's not wasting around for nobody, he's going already. He's well, I'll already take... ready without a DRS range. I know it's not active yet, but... Well, I'll tell you what. Um, fantastic start from Pines. A yellow flag is out. TJ is, I think, has gone a little bit off. But, um, yeah, that's how you take the first corner at Imola, Tier 3 and Tier 1. Everyone gets through fine and... No one is out of the race on lap one. So, yeah, good start from the tier twos. Yeah, very good start. Nobody out. They all look like sort of all bunched up. I think the biggest gap I can see is around about 1.3 seconds in the midfield. But other than that, yeah, very good. Very good at opening lap from the tier two drivers. Yeah, uh, looking like... TPA Groot has had the best start along with York. They've both gained four positions. And Jimmy Vane is the worst one out of a lot. He's dropped four from the start from eighth down to twelfth. There's a little bit of battling going on towards the mid pack. Mid, uh, mid, midfield Maestro and Rise having a battle now down towards turn four. Yeah, Rise does pull up to that one. Quite sensible there, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yorkie and uh, Sergeants are having a lot of ding dong. Well, I've just noticed they swap positions a couple of times. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the uh, the tire graphic here, Locker. There seems to be yep. very varied strategies going on. You've got the front three on mediums, and you've got fourth and fifth on soft. You've got seventh, eighth, Ooh. and tenth on hards. And it's basically looks about around the. You know, there's three drivers on hards. I think you've got five on softs um, yeah, five and around yeah. seven on uh, medium. So a very varied, um, a very varied bunch of strategies going on. Uh, Pines still leads by seven temps, but Cross Kerry now will get the DRS as it is lap three. Yeah, so he's sort of reined in that gap by a couple of temps here and there. Uh, hopefully he'll just want to, to uh, keep it within that DRS range. But he has got Tilling me pretty much right up his gearbox as well. So it's going to be interesting yeah. to see what these top three can must do. I'd say the top five, they've got a little bit of a gap. As um, if you bear with me, oh. me controls are just flashed up saying I'm low on battery. So just give me one second. I won't pause it or anything. No, go for it, mate. That's, that's fine. Tiddly Wings just had a spin. Um, and, well, I say a spin, a half spin. It took him down now to fourth. Sergeant Raninoff does take that third position off him now on the soft tyre. But um, sitting there, back there in seventh, is Phenom on the hard compound tyre. Now, become the end of the race. It obviously there's no safety cars to affect things. As I say that, someone is off at the back and Rise just took a spin down at the chicane and he's down to 15th last place now but um pines has now broken the drs 
So that is very interesting. As I say that, Koshko, he must have got a good run out of that last corner or he's on that ERS a lot because it's now back down to eight temps. Uh, looking at the moment like a very uh, interesting start to the race. As Sergeant Randolph and Tiddlywick are now both battling as well um, for third position. And his teammate, Yorkie, is now getting involved as well. Huh. Not as much. Too much, mate, not too much. Uh, as you say, I did keep it on, so I saw they were all battling. Uh, we've been requested to drink from Adrian. <laughs> Both of us. Not a problem, my Irish friend. <laughs> oh, and the Alpha Tauri boys getting very close to one another. That's the last thing they want to do is take each other both out. Yeah, I think it was on board with Tillamink. And as you said that, yeah, I think the Tillamink did get a little bit messy on that little hook, uphill right. Sort of like a mini chicane, not a mini chicane. Sort of right, then immediate little left. Yeah, it looks like, uh, oh, and we've got a little battle towards the back actually for P14. TPA Groot and Rise having a battle with each other as TPA Groot goes a bit wide and gets overtaken by Rise. Doesn't seem to be uh, finding the pace on these soft tyres at the moment. It seems to be a bit struggling out there. Yeah, I mean, four laps in. Oh, and I was just about to see that, sorry, a caught in the back run there as he jumped with Sergeant uh, Yorkie gets past his teammate up into P4. Uh, whether that was a little bit of team orders to let the uh, let Yorkie through while he is on those softs, who knows. But yeah, Yorkie now up into P4 and hunting down Reginoff. Reginoff, yeah. Yeah, potentially could have been some team orders there, but it does look like Tiddlywink is sliding about a lot. And now Silverside Boy has took the advantage and got past him into fifth position. It's almost like Tiddlywink's not really got the grip in those tyres. Maybe he's wearing them a bit hot and they're a bit slippery. Uh, Phenom, unfortunately, gets a three-second penalty. And our lead driver on those high tyres is Rivenzilla. Yeah, and of course, like you just said, obviously there's a couple of people in front of Zilla who are currently on the softs that will probably be in pit within the next would say around about three, four laps maybe. Um, and then it, of course he's got the four guys in front of him as well on the medium. So Tiddlewink does make a move down the outside in fact. Round two and one of Silverside where he does take that P5 back momentarily. Yeah and a bit further going. back Phenom is still battling with Zilla and he's all over the back of him. Obviously, Zilla has no DRS. He's three seconds off the pack in front of him, so Phenom will try and fight back now to get back that seventh place. Just jump on board with this like the battle. I mean, it's good to see there's, there is quite a few battles through the grid, and I do like these races when I'm doing commentary but where you don't know where to watch, essentially, as Tiddlewink, unfortunately, picks up a three-second time penalty. He's actually ooh, he's there or thereabouts on the back of his teammate within that DRS as well. Yeah, well, Pines is looking strong here. 2.7 is now the advantage. He's really bridged that gap to Cross Kerry. Uh, they come on to lap 7 of this race then. And those mediums can probably go, I would say, around to about lap maybe 16, 17 if you wanted to push them out. But um, whether you get, obviously, you wouldn't get a set of softs to go that far. So it most likely is going to be without safety cars. A medium hard strategy for these two in front as Yorkie now has made a move on running off. Yeah, and just as you were saying now as well, I was on board with the Zilla Phenom fight. And Phenom does get himself up into P7 in front of Zilla. And that puts Phenom in the lead, of, well, at least of the hard runners. Or a bit of a battle further back midfield. Maestro Juno Vein side by side coming up the hill. And Paulie oh. has retired. Will that be a safety car? I'm wondering. And it is. Uh, it is. And yeah, he's gone off. I think it's a turn five where he's 
clearly just got on the kerb and it's obviously spun him into that left hand side wall first safety car of the day and uh, your pines do you come in i think you do to be honest um i think if i can remember rightly sort of around this point we had a safety car on wednesday in the tier three race and i was on i started on the mediums and i still didn't come in i sort of wanted keep to my strategy and he does come out on a set of fresh odds should go to the end on that because now what this has done is actually enabled silver side boy who stayed out on his mediums in fact i think he's the only one to do so uh, and he's announced in the lead like he did last week well exactly this is what silver side boy did last week he's the only driver to stay out on his medium tires it then was the actual the way the race panned out um, if it wasn't for a post-race penalty that would have been his race win um, but he's doing the same again this week staying out on the seven lap old mediums and behind him you've got the uh, the three original hard runners at the start of the race phenom zilla and rise that now take second to fourth Hines comes out in fifth on those hards and to be honest i think you can you should be able to stick those hards out 23 laps by the time the safety car comes in but it all depends mm -hmm. on if there's any more safety cars obviously yeah and then like, like you said you've got them three a damn couple of people rat pines and cross green fifth and sixth on the fresh hards and then just behind them you've got yorkie and rajanoff who have actually come out on the mediums now interesting enough well do you think they will need stop again yeah i, I think they will I, I was, um, I, I went out quite early yesterday, so I was watching the race as it unfolded in tier one, and Fungus uh, got uh, quite lucky with the safety car. Otherwise, he would have been taking mediums 25 laps, and I don't think they're going to get that far. So, they're, they're, those guys are going to be hoping for at least another safety car because they will have to pit again. Just going to do a little shout out in the chat to apparent first man apparently he has met one of the guys in the social lobby earlier and he's looking forward to getting involved in the league hope you're enjoying the race so far um and yeah hopefully see you in the recruitment server and the main server soon and racing with us in the near future um always good to see yeah. new drivers joining the league <laughs> yeah absolutely fantastic yeah, like, like you say, if, if he's met somebody maybe randomly in an open lobby and he's tuned in tonight to watch the race, then yeah, fingers crossed he gets in sooner rather than later. Yep, yeah, that's it now, uh, Locker. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you for your for your bets. I was, I was gonna say, um, if you had to choose someone right now, who are you going for? I can, I can do this, I can do this to you, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Um, to be honest, I can't look past anybody but this young man who will go on on the Camarillo Pines. Sitting P5 at the moment, fresh, hard. Everybody in front of him at Aster Pit. Yeah, I, I can't see anybody other than Pines winning this race. I reckon it will be close with Cross Curry behind him, this young man. But I really don't think anybody but Pines is winning this race, unfortunately. Probably wrong, because they're nine times out of ten ham. But, you know, so we've got the safety car coming in this lap. And Silverside Boy does take control of the grid for us. He does indeed. And... Yeah, I have to say, if there is another safety car, I reckon you have to look at the front four right now, because they will have to be, they'll basically be able to get three pit stops. Pines has left the station! Oh, no! Oh. Pines, before the safety car restart as well, if you want to get him in as quick as possible can, buddy, yeah. please. Yeah, oh, I will get him in. Oh, Pines, you and your dodgy internet. <laughs> and that's now sadly cost him as Cross Creek has actually got past. Oh, little bit. Of, oh, Phenom's out. Oh, Phenom's oh, out. Oh, there's a max pile up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, my good God. 
and now Pines because he's NAI he's just sat behind the retired car of Juno Vane if you go on board with me that, that, <laughs> John that is that is a massive curse there oh uh, the Rise has now left the session as well come on guys bloody hell um, <laughs> let's get rising Reminded me of a similar after Anyway, jumping back to the front, got Silla on his nine lap hards, right on the back of Silverside Boy on his nine lap old mediums, battling away for the lead, and these pair are all currently three seconds in front of the next leading pack. Yeah, well, clearly what's happened. Phenom took a spin and those two have just got managed to get through them. And here comes Zilla on Silver Sideboard. Now these here two comes we know and Z. battling last week, but Silver Sideboard doesn't fight it at all. He just lets him go through. Yeah. But I think that was safety. Oh, this group does get a five second penalty going into the pits. So we've got everybody from group down. Has at the moment, sent you an apart invite, from Pines. Pines. So. He's getting them. An invite. I just want to ask very quickly as well because I know it was a bit hit and miss last week when when I was streaming. Is the stream all right for everybody in the chat? Can you sort of? There's no breakups or anything like that. So if you can let us know, please, that would be fantastic. Go. So yeah, these two at the front then. You know, we saw the great battle they had on the last lap last week. And uh, it's looking like it's going to be another one for now anyway. Rises rejoined, so that's good. The stream is fine, says Cruiser Locker, so we're all in the clear there. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Cruiser. And thank you very much for crashing on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Oh, uh, Lowface thinks that... Pines' Xbox might be overheating. Oh, Juni Vane's now left the session. Here comes Gary, though, on, Sil on uh, Revenzilla. He's not going to go for it this oh. time, though. Well, and this is these two sort of squabbling here and there has allowed actually Yorkie on his four lap old mediums to get within DRS of him, at least within DRS of Silverside Boy as well. We've got, looking a little bit further down, we've got TJM on the back of Tiddlewink for the, that will be for P6. Oh yeah, just realised Ginny Vane crashed, oh, I've just re-invited him. Sorry mate. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbing salt in the wound. <laughs> well, look who's now caught up though, Yorkie on those fresh mediums, he's right in amongst the, these two now at the front, he was three seconds behind when the safety car pulled in and he's now three tenths within Silver Side Boy and Silver Side Boy is going to want to keep Mozilla until that DRS comes back into play, it was a bit wide there Silver Side Boy, yeah. surely that's going to be a warning. It's actually a good push, we've got, oh, we've got one more that with no DRS. No, I think I think Gary's got DRS right now. He's going to oh, have yeah, a go yes. at Zilla. Must have missed that one. Come on, I do apologise. Four for the main ones. Yeah, they look a bit sort of tentative slash edgy making the move, which is always Silver Side Boy. I'm watching him from Yorkie's point of view. Does have a have a little bit of a moment for that chicane. Yeah, I mean, this is the moment now, 12 laps gone. Zilla's tyres are going to be better now than that, uh, Silver Side Boys. Um, they're going to have better, uh, they're really better condition, have about more grip. Is really, you take these mediums in a good good state up to about lap 13, lap 14, so they start going off. TJ picks up a time set penalty there as well, but it's interesting that TJ and Tiddlywink um, Technically, at the moment, net first and second once everyone else is pitted. Yeah. Ooh. There's, what's there a little bit of contact there between Yorkie and Silverside, but they get very close. It's now, I think, Zilla's going to have a job on his hands to 
defend this down into turn one. Yeah, Silver Side Boy does get alongside, does get the move done before the breaking zone. Oh, Ooh. that is well, I'm well. Ooh. I caught that on board with Zilla, and yeah, that. Well, I'll let someone clip that in, and we'll probably yeah. see who was at fault for that. But yeah. Well, uh, Silver Side Boy will be really annoyed with that. Down to seventh place he is now, and I assume he will just get into the pits now, maybe. And, well, unless he wants to try and stick it out for a set of softs at the end. But um, Yorkie now will be obviously trying to get past. But it's still oh. looking good at the moment for Timmy Wink and TJ. Yeah. Who obviously now due to that little incident at the first game now different set. Both do have time penalties though, so if they're gonna be battling up each other all through the race, it will be for what you said is that now 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 net P1. So yeah, um DRS will be enabled for your key. Um has it got it open? Just got it open, yeah. just not gaining too much. Uh, what, oh, still side boy gets a five second penalty, speeding the pet lane. Yeah, well, he's clearly annoyed with what's just happened on the lap before, but he's got some uh, wing damage as well, it looks like, from that incident. I don't know how he's managed that, but um, mm -hmm. he does come out on a set of hard, so yeah, he will go to the end now. Um, if he can, if there's another safety car, he could still be in this race. But um, yeah, not where he wanted to be from where he was a lap ago. Zilla still leads on 14 lap old cards. And I think probably we'll be looking to take these to around lap 22, 23. Yeah, I think what, what's going on notice as well is R Sergeant Rad running off has actually got in within the DRS of Yorkie in front of him as well. Yeah, oh, Pines has left again. Well, I think he gets one more chance to join. And then if he can't, if he leaves again, then we might just have to leave it because he should not be disconnecting three times. Well, as we've got Yorkie, got the DRS open. Is he looking to make a move in down into turn one? No. But they are still fairly close to these top three. Yeah, Yorkie's got to make a move soon. Surely he can get close enough. But the thing is, the more he waits, the mediums are slowly and slowly. They're getting towards their sort of peak performance now. And even at 15 mm -hmm. lap old odds, um, I think, yeah, I think Zillow here um, could still have the advantage. Um, and, okay, I apologise. Apparently it's not as... Um, it's not his internet, his Xbox keeps turning up. <laughs> wow. But all I'll say is, Pines, have you got have you got a gap underneath the power brick? Like, have you got like some ventilation under there? Because if you've just got that sat on a surface, that's going to have no air getting under it whatsoever. So sort it out, lad, because, come on, you're still technically in with chances and points here. Oh, Yorkie's gone wide! Oh, and that's allowed running, running off to close in. Well, both got D DRS. The R side Very by close. side. Oh, please. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, they're there. Woo. <laughs> oh, it's a bit too close to comfort. But it has allowed Zilla to pull away slightly. Oh, well, yeah. Points. He's uh, got out of the DRS range now at 1.1 seconds. Um, so, Dylan will be loving that. Sergeant had a great move down into the first corner. That was a brilliant move from him. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, 15 laps to go. It stays like this. If Tiddlywink can make those tyres last. Then how many penalties has he got? He has only got three seconds at the moment. So. Uh, the gap between him and Zilla is 4.7 seconds, so he should have about 
at least a 15 second lead. It all depends on how quickly Zilla can um, gain back that time if there is no safety cars in the uh, latter stages of this race. Which ho hopefully there won't be. But yeah, like you say, he's still in a strong position to the wink. And possibly TJ as well. I know. Oops, excuse me. I know he has dropped off the back of Tillingwink slightly uh, as midfield master of pits from his softs should be going on a set of hards to the end now, and he hasn't. He's gone on to a set of mediums. Yeah, well, you can make that last uh, 14 laps. It should be fine with that if they're new tyres. So uh, all depends if they're new though, and. Pines has joined again. They are new tyres, so he should, yeah, he should be fine to the end. Lovely stuff. It's now running off. Has actually got back within the DRS of Zilla. Yeah, definitely. A, a very good... Uh, he's come back from the 1.1 seconds. Now down to six temps again. And I remember two seasons ago, these two had a good battle towards the end of this... Uh, when we came to Imola at the end of season two, it was uh, Zilla and Raninov having a good battle, and it looks like at the moment it's that uh, situation again. Uh, when does Zilla decide to pick? That is the question. That is the question that probably Raninov and Yorkie behind him are wondering as well. Because obviously we've had a safety car that will have allowed him to extend his step by stint by a few laps at least. So, could potentially see Zilla here drag out those hards and go on to a set of softs towards the end. I think that's his plan, and if that is what he's planning, then he should hone in on those hard runners uh, very, very quickly. Uh, yep. Midfield Maestro as well, at the moment, is uh, behind a leader, 31, so yeah, he's a bit too far back to be in contention. Um, Zilla uh, Piggle in the chat seems to say that it's straight line speed that is winning this race for him. I'm just going to have a look at the straight line speed now that he said that. Um, I mean, to be fair, we did sort of see somewhat similar, if you remember, last week in, at Australia with Zilla. Or was it Biddle? It was one of the two. Yeah, the, well, the, set, the set up of their wings sort of saved them from getting overtaken the DRS yeah. zones. Yeah, I think it was Biddle, yeah. Yeah, I mean, straight line speed's all he needs to keep, keep this lead. So he's got plenty of battery as well, compared to, especially compared to Sergeant Manoff, who's actually out CRS. It's coming up now to bat markers, and oh, it's running off or not like that, because Stiff Meister has got in between the two, and look at the gap now forming because of that, and he gets out of the way now, but it's up to 1.4. Yeah, like you just said, Reginoff unfortunately allowed that back marker to get in between and that probably would have put a smile on Zilla's face momentarily. Can now Reginoff get that gap back down and get back within the DRS of Zilla at the front? Zilla comes on to the lap 20 group is off the track gets out of the way of these front pack and he's getting out of the way of basically any everyone <laughs> which is only which is the downside to getting lap because you literally have no chance really of getting any where near the person that's in front of you uh, unfortunately uh, he's got himself 10 seconds there which is very harsh in the game that is a bit harsh in the game he's done the sensible thing getting out of the way of everybody but yeah Sons of all the game decides to give him a 10 second penalty, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, well, you know, I think if he did clip that, if there was a safety car, and he got right back up to the pack and he did clip that, we potentially would take that off. But at the moment, it's not going to matter for anything. He is P12, so no points for him as it stands. And he does retire from the session. Oh. Uh, unfortunately for TPA group um, 11 then left in the race Cross Kerry the only one that is not in the points positions yeah and uh, 
running off has actually got back within the DRS of Zilla fairly quickly, I'd say. I'd say within the lap at least. Yeah, it was a yellow flag out. Oh, it's CPA Groot's car coming up back onto the track, I think. But yeah, as you say, Locker, Sergeant back within the DRS. And But, you know, Zilla's still keeping the lead. And the gap to uh, Tindywink is increasing. Now, that's really the only person he's got to worry about at this stage. Um, yep. Is Tiddlywink. And uh, I think, obviously, TJ's in fifth. If you got anywhere near TJ, TJ would probably just let him through because they are teammates. Um, but, yeah, at the moment, it's looking good for Zilla. He just got to hope there is no more safety cars. And uh, he should be all right. Um, and even if there was a safety car here, I think everyone would be pulling into the pits anyway. So Zilla yeah. is looking in prime position here. And if he wins from 11th, it'd be a great drive from himself. Absolutely, yeah. Couldn't agree more. Obviously, it might sound a little bit of bias in there. We can be an Aston Martin, but <laughs> honestly, it is not bias. <laughs> I think he's, he's actually... He, he could have been in a McLaren for all I care, but he's actually run a fantastic race so far. Yeah, definitely he has. Midfield Maestro slightly uh, brought the gap down to Zilla. It wasn't 31, it's now 28. But I still think Zilla, it doesn't take 28 seconds to have a pit stop round here, so he will no. still be behind him once he comes out. Um, TPA group, yeah, left the session. Zilla then comes down to the end of lap 22, and. I think as Rice takes the fastest lap of an 18-2, he's got to come in now on the next lap, surely. It's going to be another lap. It's going to be another lap. It's just literally the only, the closest on, on track battle at the moment is between these top two currently is we've got Yorkie, who's decided to pit him behind these pair on his 15 lap old mediums. Now, that's allowed TJ to jump up and Yorkie's actually gone onto a set of softs. So could we potentially see Zilla in this lap to sort of cover off that same? Yeah, well, the softs are going to have about five laps, I'd say, of good quality uh, sort of, yeah, good sort of like times that you'll be able to do on them. Once they get past that, they do tend to drop off quite quickly. It all depends on the uh, on the tyre tire management. Zilla has surely got to pit this lap. Surely has yeah. to. Yeah, and I've seen, I've seen Yorkie as well. He has come out just behind Midfield Maestro as well, which is sort of where you were looking if Zilla did pit. So potentially Zilla could out, come out either just in front or just behind them, uh, from what you were saying a moment ago, a few laps ago. Yeah, well, I think he would have seen Yorkie come in, so he knows that he'll have the advantage. Sure, he's going to come in this lap. Yes, yeah, he does. Yeah, and he has. Right. Let's jump on board with Yorkie, just to see how close this will be. And Ranenoff follows him in as well. So then Tiddlywink now takes the lead of the Grand Prix. Is that, is that Cross Kerry unlapping himself? I think it is. Cross Kerry is unlapped. Zilla, here comes in it. Midfield Marshall coming around my last corner then, along with Yorkie. Who is going to come out in front? I think Zilla has got this chance. It's Yorkie now. Overtakes midfield Maestro and they're coming out the pit lane now and they both are ahead. So they've just about made it stick on that pit stop. And... Locker, I don't know whether what's happened with the stream, if you've left or something, I'm seeing it in the chat. Please, someone tell me what has happened, because I have no idea. I'm just going to try and keep you updated with what's going on. Oh, his control has died. Brilliant from Locker. God's sake. Right, okay, well, whatever... Let me just check the stream. Who? What? <laughs> Sorry about this. 
Here we go. No, oh, we can't even see who's actually uh, he's on. So no worries. I'll just keep you updated then, like a radio show of what's going on then. So Revenzilla uh, comes out 1.1 seconds ahead of Yorkie. And uh, Sergeant Ranoff now gets let through by his Alpine teammate. Midfield Maestro goes into uh, fifth position. Um, and he'll now try to be hunt down those two in front of him with York and Zilla, but he has got that three-second penalty. So as it stands then, the gap between Tiddlywink and Zilla is 16.7 seconds. Tiddlywink does have, though, that three-second penalty, so we'll cut it down to 13 seconds. The question is, can Zilla gain 13 seconds in seven laps? He's got to basically gain two seconds a lap for the whole duration now left of the race I do think he could do it within the first sort of like I said already four or five laps but to do it in the latter stage of the race it's going to be difficult and uh, is that you back my friend <laughs> yeah I've just had to have a right scramble trying to find my way you oh. are a fraud aren't you bloody hell I know if it's not my connection it's my bloody pad <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was just telling the viewers, Locker, um, yeah, we've got uh, Zilla now, 15 seconds behind, well, 12 seconds with the penalty that Tillybunk has got. He's got six laps then to basically gain two seconds a lap. It's going to be very tight. Oh, Zilla! And he's got the three second penalty, which now means it is 15 seconds. Oh. What have you done that for? And we're really cursing people tonight, aren't we? We? I think it's just mainly being what? you, aren't it? <laughs> oh, you did say you did say Pines is going to win. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> right then, we. Very fast. Don't catch my breath. I'm rushing round. Will you try and find me blue by? Well, I'm telling you now, the way it's going at the moment. Zilla isn't going to catch Tibby Wink at this rate. He might not even catch TJ at this rate either. He's still nine seconds off his teammate. So, um, as it stands, it's been Tibby Wink taking the win, but we've still got five laps to go. But it's another great outing for me, uh, Aston Martin boys. Second and third as we speak. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Obviously, I'm not trying to sound too biased, but yeah, both ran very, very good races at the moment. Um, Silverside Boy does pick up a three second time penalty. Obviously, now down in eighth. What was looking like a strong lead uh, race from Silverside Boy. He unfortunately, had that incident earlier on in the race and sadly back there in P8. Yeah, unlucky for him. Um, down in eighth before that uh, collision with Zilla earlier on. Yorkie and Ranenoff now having a battle, but Ranenoff has got that penalty to his name. Nine seconds, actually, I've just realised. So there's no chance, really, at the moment that he's even going to gain anything on Yorkie in front of him, even if he does get past. Um, yeah, 13 seconds. He's not gaining nowhere near enough. And he's gone off the track there, Zilla. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't like the strategy has worked on this occasion. No, unfortunately not. And with you saying there, uh, John, on the track, I think that's a case of Zilla pushing that little bit too much. Um, obviously, we've got Yorkie behind him as well on similar tyre age without the penalty as well. So, whether it's just a case of Zilla, unfortunately, pushing a bit too hard to try and bridge that gra gap between himself and Yorkie. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a yellow flag out, and I think it is it's Cross Kerry or Stiffmeister? I think, yeah, Cross Kerry's took a spin, so he is now lapped again. Um, he will be hoping, obviously, for uh, someone to crash out so he can uh, <laughs> get a point. <laughs> yeah, and lap himself, but we've got about four or five laps to go. That'll be a good time to over to the penalty situation as the top three currently all on three seconds so we've got Tiddlywink, TJ and Zilla all on three seconds uh, we've got Yorkie who's looking in a strong position as long as he's 
keep that gap under the three second mark two zellers on on course for a podium uh, we've got running off behind unfortunately on that nine nine seconds of penalties uh, and then it's just still sad boy on the eight seconds so not too many penalties from the guys who are still racing which is good to see Yep, not too many from the lads tonight. Um, we've got the odd person that's got quite, you know, over three, but apart from that, it's not too bad. Fiddly Wink then, still out in front, slightly pulling the gap as well, still to TJ. Uh, he just needs to do three and a half more laps, and he will be today's race winner. Uh, as Yorkie is running off, having another battle. Yeah. Coming down the pit straight, running off did get a bunch of Yorkie, but I think running off I did have a moment go, going through them chicanes and allowed Yorkie to pinch that position back. Yeah, uh, it looks. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Randolph can fight all he likes, but unless Yorkie makes a mistake, he ain't going to keep that P4. Um, he will drop further down, and even even he will either drop behind his teammate midfield Maestro because he's only 4.3 seconds behind, and he's got no penalties. Um, so he will drop behind him as well. Tiddly Wink comes on to lap 30, or just about to anyway. 7.3 seconds now to TJ, and yeah, I don't think now we're going to get a safety car. Whatever happens, so all he's now got to do is keep it on the track, and he will take his first FPRL win. Yep. Interesting what I've been noticing as well while I've been on board with other people is Zilla is increasing that gap to these pair the pair of Yorkie I'm running off. It's now two point six crucially for him. Yeah, so with Sergeant and Yorkie battling, he could still claim P three at the moment. Yeah, two point eight now. It's almost as if Yorkie's tires have just kind of fallen off a cliff. Um, now down there, now 2.9, so Zilla definitely got the better tyres as it stands. Gorkies are a lap older, but um, yeah, it's definitely looking like, at the moment, that um, Zilla's going to take third. He could even take second here. He's only now two seconds behind his teammate, TJ. 2.7 seconds. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Oh, as Yorkie does go a little bit wide, that allows Radunov to get through. Uh, and because of that little slight off, that's now got the gap up to, f uh, well, it did temporarily, <laughs> over three seconds. As yeah, like we were yeah. just b both saying, the more these pair fight, the more chance it's going to give Zilla of increasing that gap behind him. Cross carries re overtaking TJ. <laughs> um, Rise also comes out in front of Zilla. Now, how's he going to impede him here? Hopefully not too much. Zilla now 1.8 behind his teammate. Now, who is going to take second place here? That is the question. He really has caught up to him in these last few stages. Whoever gets second or third, it will still be the same amount of points for Aston Martin. Yep. TJ look, looks as if those hard tyres have gone the distance now. Are those 23 laps old now? Yeah, but... Uh... More importantly, who's going to get this last podium? Is that gap between third and fourth does keep going either side of three seconds? Yeah, well, it will be Zilla still. Obviously, Sergeant's got nine seconds, so the gap we're looking for is Zilla and Yorkie, which currently stands at 3.9. Ah. So Zilla's going to have to make a mistake, or Yorkie's going to have to have a blistering last lap to get on the podium now. Or potentially. Zilla makes another mistake and gets another penalty. But so he come on to the final lap then, Tiddlywink needing, all he's got to do is one more lap and he will be the winner. Yeah, and that you've just covered will be his first race win in FBRL. Now what are these Aston Martin boys going to do? Do not fight, please. Zilla, stay there. Sorry. They'd be mad to fight now, you know, to be throwing all their points away if they do. Just got a whole station now, but what Zilla will be wondering, he won't want TJ to go too slow, because obviously Walkie um, yeah. is behind, but it's 4.1, so it's looking like it should be fine at the moment. 
Um, Sydney Reed just got half a lap to go then until he is an FPRL winner. And I have to say, Locker, I don't think we expected him to win today, but it looks like that's going to be the case. No, I, like we've heard, I've obviously caught to hear somebody saying I will win, but no, I, di I didn't pick. I uh, didn't think to double wing, sorry, he's going to win this race. He comes around the last few couple of corners now. As Yorkie does, in fact, pick up that three second time penalty, sorry. And we've got Yorkie, he's actually doing a cheeky little weave. Coming out the line, does take the flag. And that is Tiddlywink, does take the win. First race win in FPRL. Absolutely phenomenal driver. We've got, it was in fact TJ who took the P2 out of the two Aston Martins. Zilla does keep the podium. Uh, and then we've got Yorkie coming across the line in P4. Midfield Maestro takes fifth, running off sixth. And it will be Silver Side Boy seventh, Pines eighth, and Stiff Master ninth. Cross Creek tenth, and unfortunately a lap down. Also the case of Rise in P11. We picked up the wooden spoon, unfortunately. <laughs> well, yeah, a big well done to Tiddly Wink. I don't think, like I said, no one would have really said that he was going to win today, but he has shown some fantastic pace all week in TTs, in practice races, and it's been a thoroughly deserved win from him today. Um, he'll be really, really happy with that. Like you say, TJ and Zilla were fighting a little bit towards the end, the last few corners, but um, I don't think it was really worth throwing away all their points. Um, so, yeah, another great finish for the Aston Martin boys that puts them probably even further uh, up in the in the uh, constructors, overall constructors. So well done to them. And I'm just going to get the three podium sitters into the party, hopefully. Yeah, brilliant. As I will uh, run down the uh, races while you do that. So, yeah, like we said, Taylor Wink and his Alpha Tower for taking his first FPR race win in, from fourth on the grid. And then finished rounding off the podium, we've got TJM and Revenge Zilla of the Aston Martin crew. Uh, Yorkie, strong race from him also from 3-9. Here, finishing P4. Then we've got Midfield Maestro, Sergeant Ranoff, Silverside Boy, uh, Pines, Stiff Master, and Cross Curry taking, uh, finishing off the points. Wow. And then we've got P11 Rise. And then unfortunately, we've got Groot, Phenom, Juno Vane, and Borley all retiring. Uh, Tiddlywink, just do me a favour, mate. Just turn your volume down a bit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's really coming through loud. That He's is not coming through handsome. Tiddlywink. Tiddlywink. You can turn it down a little bit, my friend, please. That's better. Oh. Don't forget to include your audio, please, 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 mate. Please, mate. And then, yeah, so, so. Have we got everybody in who needs to be? Now we have. They are now. All three of them are in. The podium sitters. How do you want to do this, Locker? I'll let you decide as your main con. Uh, I'll let you take third and the race winner mate and I'll take P2 okay mate okay, no, mate, worries. no worries. worries that oh, echo is really that. annoying me I'm not going to lie yeah it's mine I can't do it okay okay well we'll start with P3 then obviously is Revenzilla make sure you include your audio mic uh, mate yeah. probably already have but yeah another great uh, race for yourself um, P3 from P11 on the grid. Um, so, yeah, a definite great race. Gained eight places. Uh, I just want to ask you straight up, do you think you're going to keep that third place? 
No, I was like fucking Pry Parsons, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you maybe potentially missed the breaking point, or did you think it was a bit um, early on the brakes well, from the person in front of you? I used the same breaking point I normally did. I, I mean, personally, I think he was early on the brakes, but it's kind of hard to prove that, and I don't have a clip, so I'm not really fussed. Obviously, I've, I've apologised to Gary already. I wouldn't ever intentionally take it up. It's just, it's just one of them. One of them ones where, you know, both people have two different breaking zones because they're making an overtake into the corner. So, just unlucky. Yeah, well, fair enough. Obviously, um, quali didn't really go your way. Would you hoping? Um, to have another run late on, was there an invalidation for you? Because obviously P11, I think you would have been hoping to be a bit further up on the grid. Yeah, well, Gary told me that the Delta was coming down to Inters, so I came in the box to put Inters on, came in and it said the Delta was plus three seconds, so I was like, cheers, mate. <laughs> so it came back out and only got one flying lap and invalidated Oh, it, so. right, so, so that's, so, so that's so, why, yeah, you, hit him, that's why you hit him off then. Exactly, I think that's fair <laughs> enough. If the stewards bear that in mind, I reckon that's fair enough. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, the, the hard stint was kind of um, working for you uh, early on. Um, you were the highest of the hard runners at the start. Obviously, safety car came in. Were you, after you came in for softs, did you think you'd potentially you know, gain a bit more on the two in front of you a bit quicker? Because well, I think we've all thought that you'd be gaining a bit more of a pace to Tiddly Wink. I don't know. I think it was like one and a half, two seconds a lap. And bearing in mind how good of a race tyre the hards are, like, the softs are bad. They're, they're really not very good for any longer than five laps. Yeah, um, that's what we were saying. And, and when I was on 22 lap hards, I was setting fastest lap after fastest lap every lap. So they're, they're really good race tyre. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, still a P3 uh, at the moment anyway, so you must be pleased with that. Move on next week to Miami. Uh, firstly, will you be racing there? And if you are, how would you rate your chances around the street circuit? Um, no, I'm not racing. And I'd just oh. like to say, I oh. think TJM may be top of the championship after that. Uh, I believe you are correct. I've got, I've got a feeling that TJM 1992, Mr. Nearly got dropped down to tier 3, is now top of the stage. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, didn't, like... didn't we say tier uh, two ends tonight? Um, yeah, not... tier two, right, tier two's ended, mate. Get them for the title, Scott's mate. Get the, get the fucking medals ordered. Get... <laughs> you know what, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not too sure I can say yes to that. I'm pretty sure it was ten points behind you. Yeah, he is ten points behind me, but no, my luck. I'll end up getting a race ban for that one. And... <laughs> TJ, <laughs> public enemy number one. Fuck it, I'll get a race ban. TJM's top of the championship. Jobs are good at up the Aston Martin. Indeed. <laughs> well, it's certainly a good result for yourself. And yeah, obviously, your teammate Aston Martin, another great uh, result tonight. So well done. Locker, I'll let you interview our other Aston Martin man. <laughs> Thank you very much, and well done, Zilla, on your P3, my friend. Uh, yeah, moving on to our P2 man. Hello, Tijum. <laughs> Mr. Lockett. How are we, my friend? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm buzzing, man. <laughs> I, I bet you are. We've done this the other way around, mate. You've interviewed me a couple of times, but I think this is the first time I've got a chance to interview you, is it? Um, yeah, I mean, my podiums were lacking last season, so, um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's the first time you've actually interviewed me. I mean, you well, yeah. normally abandon comms last minute, Locker, so you don't normally All get right, to see these things. All right, move on, you've had your chance, go away. <laughs> uh, but no, um, obviously, I, I know, and probably a couple of us know, you've had a little bit of time off, mate, so obviously coming back onto the game tonight, seeing that it's a wet quality, how did that feel for yourself, if we start with your quality? Um, yeah, quality, uh, obviously, I, I've, I've done no practice this week on the track, um, dry or wet, um, did a little bit for the race, a um, little bit wet, luckily, um, so I, I knew what I was in for, um, but I couldn't really hook the lap up, there was one lap, I was, I was eight temps up going into sector two, um, and then, unfortunately, Silverside Boy was in front of me, and um, was on the racing line, not on a lap, and I had to abandon the lap and couldn't put it back in. Ah. 
Tots, tots, tots. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, starting P11, I, I wasn't too fussed, but mm. um, yeah, I de definitely feel like I could have been in that top 10 if I got that lap in. Yeah, uh, and then obviously going on to the race, um, obviously starting P11, I mean, was was it a steady enough race for you? Obviously, you got, it looks like the, obviously the strategy worked to get you that P2, I mean, did you have a... In the back of your mind, was it on, was it a case of you might have hoped for a couple of safety cars or hoped not? I do like to ask this from um, time to time. I was hoping for one safety car. Um, so on my, on my very start, going through sets of one or two, I think it was. Um, I think TPA Groove had a, had a really good launch for one of the corners. Um, and there was a little bit of contact between us. I think it was more of a racing incident than anything. And I, mm. I dropped the back of the grid. Um, yep. So yeah, they, they, I had to get my head straight. I was hoping for a safety car then, and the safety car come out and I put the hard tyres on. Um, and I, I, I knew it was going to be a long stint, but it was just about keeping the head down and and keeping it clean from that point onwards. Exactly. Yep. Like you just said, obviously you pitted under that first safety car, took those hard tyres to the end, kept your head down, and deservedly, I think, my, my friend, you got yourself a cheeky P2. So very congratulations on that my friend and I'll move on to Yorkie who can interview our race winner who as I'm sure is ready to, and eager to get the uh, interview done uh, yeah. Well, well, yeah well done well, TJ you, you, well, well you, hold, you, hold on who's Yorkie yeah, I was going to say you just what? referenced monkey boy is Yorkie oh uh, ok monkey boy Yorkie whatever <laughs> yeah a few too many bees mate I think how do you right uh, well then <laughs> Yeah, well done, Tidgem, um, on the P2. I have to say, great result, continue having no practice. Uh, very well done. Um, I am then coming now to our race winner. It was Tiddlewink today, and I have to say, um, a, bit, a bit of a surprise winner, if, if you don't mind me saying, but um, you've had the pace all week um, in the practice, and you've been quite good on the TT around here. Um, how does it feel to take your first FPR win? I didn't really expect Cyrus Underwood, you're muted, mate. It's an include your audio, buddy. It is included in everything. And unmute your mic. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Yeah, just a bit quiet, my friend. If you can get a bit close to the mic. Um... Yeah, I'm right next to it. I've not used the mic in ages. Yeah. But yeah, no, how, much, how does it feel to your first well? FPR? How does it feel your first FPR win? Must be great. Yeah, yeah, I'm buzzing. But, uh, I didn't I mean, did expect you... it to be. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, did you expect to be uh, be up right up there today? Um, well, I felt like I had pace in the wet, but I, I don't know if you saw, but I was struggling throughout the um, throughout the race. I kept on slipping, and I, it really put like a strain on my tire wear. So I was kind of getting a bit nervous. So I was in punch territory at the end as well. That's why I was dropping pace so bad. But yeah, we did see you uh, battling with your teammate Yorkie early on. Uh, I, what I see, what you meant there with the sliding of the rears. Um, so yeah, to find it a bit hard to get to the grip. But um, in the end, it's paid off with the strategy that you've taken. Um, were you tempted? I mean, when you say you were coming and it were awards puncher territory. Can you tell us how far the tyres were gone in terms of percentage? Uh, yeah, 75% at the end around that area, I think. So, okay, so yeah, a few more laps yeah. it would have gone then, yeah. Yeah, I could see um, Zilla pulling up on TGM, but I realised that I dropped uh, TGM seven seconds um, coming out of the pit. So I, I was like, oh, I should be, shouldn't I? I should be all right. Um, but as soon as them tyres started to go off, I tried to leave it off a bit, so I started dropping second in the lap to Zilla. Um, but, yeah, I felt pretty confident towards the end that I was going to get it. I, just, I was just trying to keep on track. Yeah, well, obviously, once again, well done on the win today. It's a great result for yourself. First FPR win, always a great thing to achieve. Um, next week, uh, like I've said to Zilla already, we head to Miami. Um, if you are racing next week, how do you fancy your chances around there? Well, I, I'm, I think I'm quite strong at Miami, but it seems to me like I'm trying to beat Pines at every single track, but um, he's, he's the man to beat at the moment on time trial. He's just rapid. There's no way he should be, he should be tier two. 
but I mean, definitely tier, tier one for next season, I think, rapid. But I've just been focusing on trying to be faster than Pines because that put me a pretty good step if I uh, if I want to just be consistent throughout the race. So yeah, I yeah. feel alright at Miami. I felt comfortable start of the well since the track came out. Okay, yeah, well, it's obviously a good target to beat Pines. We all know that he's very, very, very quick in time trial and quali. So, yeah, hopefully you have a good race next week. Well done once again uh, on the race win today. And another 25 points for Alpha Tauri as well. Um, Locker, anything to add on that? Uh, no. Obviously, I know exactly what you're feeling. You first went to the wink, so many congratulations on our friend and enjoy it. Thank you, thank you. No problem. And um, I think I've just got to do my driver of the day, I believe. And I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Give it Phenom. Give it to Phenom. Uh, I'm afraid I cannot do that this week. He's going to have to have a good race in order for me to do that. <laughs> but I do have to uh, simply hand it to him. Um, well, mainly for the reason that he's had no practice whatsoever uh this week and he's come back straight in and got p2 from where he started on the grid as well tj you are my driver of the day today <laughs> yeah boy thanks that mate yeah it feels good to be back and uh hitting the ground run again and uh yeah you never know at the moment i'm, I'm battling for the championship here all right, all right, calm down, mate. Like seriously, I've just been thinking about it. The amount of points I've got now is what I finished on the whole of season three with. So I've only done better than last season. <laughs> yeah, good lad, good lad. Right then. Um, so yeah, phenomenal race from our T2 drivers around uh, Imola. and I believe we are back on Sunday for our. F2 race around, let me just get the track up, it is Sandvoort this week for F2 race, not quite sure who is on comms, but yeah, but yeah, thank you very much for tuning in, and hopefully see you all on Sunday, goodbye.